All right, Braden with Go Hunt, and today we have a late season gear list for you. Before we jump into that, make sure you guys like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, help us out a ton. And if you have any comments throughout this whole thing while I'm doing this, be sure to just drop a comment in right away so you don't forget it, and I'll be happy to respond to you. Late season gear can be kind of complicated, but you can keep it pretty simple too. So if you have any questions, um, you know, random little things about you think might work better, or you saw a piece of gear that you want you know, me to dive into further, definitely drop a comment down below to get, get back to you guys. I just returned from a Montana um, special permit elk hunt with my brother. He drew the tag, um, it was a phenomenal hunt, and this is exactly piece by piece the gear I brought on that hunt. Um, again, it was a truck style hunt. We had a you know, trailer we kind of slept in at night, so it wasn't like we were backpacking out, but we still needed a lot of this cold weather gear because the temperatures were dropped down, I think it was negative nine um, for a couple days, so. Timbers were cold, but elk action was uh, hot. So let's run through all this gear I took on this hunt. So clothing worn, I'll start off with again, you guys all know my favorite piece in the world is a Sitka Core lightweight hoodie. Um, again, these are in subalpine. I just love this as a base layer. I love the hood on top. So even when it was cold out, you know, in the morning you have to start by hiking with minimum layers, otherwise you're getting hot right away. So I'm rocking this. I'm also wearing the Sitka Ballistic Vest. So the morning's hiking around. This gives me enough warmth without getting you know, too crazy warm right away in the morning. And I also have that hood that I'll throw up on me when we're just hiking around trying to get the wind off my neck, that sort of thing. So I don't want to you know, throw a bunch of layers on right away. You always think you might need it when you start out hunting in the morning, but then you're gonna get hot. You have to stop, waste some time, you know, take layers off. So in the morning, I'd always just start off wearing this when we're hiking. Um, and then also adding on top of some of these layers, once you sort of sit down and get glassing, um, I guess I should also mention too that I do hike around a lot in the uh, Sika Jetstream jacket. So core lightweight hunting underneath, Sika Jetstream, it's gonna be really windy. I'm hiking around, I can take these pit zips, zip them all the way open, dump a bunch of heat there. And then again, you have to use the ballistic vest, orange vest on top of everything because this was a hunt in Montana where orange is required 400 square inches of visible orange. So. Jetstream vest, we'll jump into that. Another one of those pieces, like I said, you can dump a lot of heat, which I love. And you know, for most of my backpack style hunts, I really don't bring a soft shell jacket, but on late season hunts where, you know, weight's really not that much of a concern, I love the Jetstream jacket. It just blocks a ton of wind and it's also just a good insulation piece. Uh, I utilize a lot of the zippers, pockets, put some, you know, I wear contacts, so I'll throw some contacts in here, throw some extra batteries in here to kind of keep them warm for my camera. That sort of thing. So this is just a piece I really love. Love the hood on it. Can't say enough about it. Just a good all around piece for a late season uh, deer or elk hunt. Then once you start sitting down doing some glassing, um, I don't like to have a ton of hoods. As you notice a lot of stuff does have hoods, but the one piece that I go without a hood on is the Core um, Midweight by Sitka. Again, just a great insulation piece. I know I say it a lot, but I have a lot of favorite pieces and the Core Heavyweight um, zip tee here is another one of my favorites. Um, this has a more of a uh, uh, like insulated neck collar area. You know, it's got that good little line fleece on the inside. I zip this all the way up, you know, right to my nose. Um, keeps me warm when I'm, when I'm sitting there glassing. Hood is awesome. Articulates when I move around. And just adding all these pieces together is just going to, you know, increase chances of you being warm and not overheat, not like overheating too much while you're hiking around because late season hunts are always about layering. You know, everyone knows about layering, the importance of it. And just having all these pieces, if I get too hot and I'm hanging around, boom, just take it off really quick. Sitting down glassing though, I'm gonna want some of these pieces because adding on top of all these, when it's negative degrees out, it's gonna help make your glassing sessions a lot more enjoyable. And if you're comfortable with glassing, you're gonna glass more effectively. So that's why a lot of this gear is kind of aimed around comfort while sitting in there all day long glassing or you know, hiking, running, gunning, trying to find those elk or deer if you're hunting deer in the late season. Pants, late season, I swear by the sick of Timberline pants. So there's a lead color, as you can see, it's pretty muddy in Montana once the, once the temperatures got warm, but I love the knee pads. I love having the reinforced knee down here, you know, kneeling in snow, kneeling when you're cutting up your bowl, that sort of thing, it comes in handy a lot. Also on the backside, you got reinforced um, backside here kind of keeps a little bit dry when you're sitting down if it's snowing, but also I always have a 
blasting pad that'll fit on, but it's nice to have that feature too. And while we're talking about this, let's talk about suspenders. I absolutely love suspenders. Call me an old guy, but suspenders are super great on a hunt. Also have, you know, a Sika belt as well. But while we're in Montana, my brother was wishing he had some suspenders. His, you know, we were packing out a bowl, pants started falling down all the time. I had suspenders on. A great. The only downside with suspenders on a late season hunt is you have to de-layer everything when I mean, you gotta go to the bathroom. You can't just, you know, take your pants off easy. You have to take all the layers off to get to suspenders. Take those off. That's the only kind of downfall of suspenders. They're super comfortable. You don't even know they're there. Help hold your pants up. Great feature to have. Doesn't add any weight again. We're not really concerned about weight here. We're concerned about comfort while glassing and hunting effectively. So, sick of Timberline pants. Phenomenal, phenomenal late season. Uh, fam. And then uh, some other insulation pieces, it's just, just a uh, icebreaker merino leggings. I think this is the uh, Body Fit 150. I don't really like having a ton of, you know, big thick merino or a big thick synthetic on my legs. Because um, a lot of times the wool just hike around with this all day. It's really not that bad when it's cold out to hike around with this. And the uh, Timberline pants. And then again, if I get hot, just take it off. And then socks. So socks on a late season hunt are going to be very, very essential. So these are just a super old pair of Lorpen. I don't even know what kind they are. Merino wool um, late season socks. What I really like about these though, they're super tall. So I, as I see here, I wear pack boots. So I'll lift my pack boots, have good uh, cushion on the shins. And then on the inside of those, I wear liner sock. This is not just your standard cotton sock. I'm not even sure what material this is, I can't remember, but this is a liner sock, and I always wear these on my late season hunts. I also have some farm to feet socks, but unfortunately, when I went to Montana on this last trip last week, I couldn't find my farm to feet uh, late season socks. Still don't know where they're at. I found one, I don't have two. But it's good to probably bring a couple extra pairs of socks on a late season hunt, especially for truck hunting. You know, just, you get a lot, maybe you get a bunch of sweat in your socks, you wanna change them out, let these dry back at camp. So probably bring some extra socks would be a great benefit on your late season hunts. And then I do always pack rain gear, no matter what hunt it is, scout, summer scouting, uh, through midfall, through late season. What I really like about the dew point pants by Sitka, they're super lightweight. They don't take up any space in my backpack. And it's really nice, like I, I put these on, um, on the opening day of the season this year, it was a big nasty snowstorm. We're sitting on glassing for a while, I just wanted to add a little bit of extra comfort and not getting snow on all my clothes. So I just put these on, add a good little slightly windbreaker, and also this keeps me dry when I'm sitting down in the snow. Like I said, I do have a glassing pad, but sometimes, you know, your butt slips off your glassing pad when you're sitting there glassing. This just adds to I don't get uh, all my other clothes wet. All right, now let's talk about some of the insulation layers, like the extreme insulation layers. So like I said, this was a really cold hunt. Um, and since I was flying up there, I did take a couple extra pieces of down just in case, you know, temperatures got warm, I didn't want to bring the big heavy jacket the whole time. But the entire hunt, I did carry around the Sika Down Windstopper, Kelvin Down Windstopper jacket. I even hiked around in this, it was so cold. So this is a bomber, bomber, late season insulation piece. Super, super warm. Like I said, you can hike around in it, but it's gonna be like hiking around in an oven, cranked to 400 degrees, you're gonna be hot. So when it's negative degrees out and we're not really moving that much, maybe we're just moving down a ridge line, I'll just keep this on, that way I can sit down and start glassing right away. But I absolutely love this piece. And then again, since temperature's really cold, I opted for um, the full length uh, Sika insulated pants here. These are, I don't even know, a couple years old, but I bring these on a lot of my late season hunts too. But with that said, I do wanna talk about the extra layers I brought. So, for example, on a recent Idaho backcountry hunt where I was hiking in, it was still really cold temperatures, below freezing every night. Um, I opted to bring in the Kelvin, um, Kelvin Down three-quarter pant. These were great because on that hunt I just had gaiters and these were all I really needed. So if you're going to be active a lot and you want to save weight, maybe you are going to be doing some backpack hunting on a late season hunt, I'd probably opt to these or these pants just because of space. The amount of space these take up in your pack is a lot less than these. And this is still super warm too, especially when you couple, you know, Timberline pans, some insulation underneath that. And again, so I did pack two down jackets on this hunt. This is a Kelvin light down jacket. 
Um, I actually did not use this jacket on this hunt, but I brought it with anyway, just in case, you know, the temperatures weren't super cold. I wanted to save a little weight in my pack. I was going to bring this. Um, in Idaho, I rocked this the whole time. Like again, the Kelvin light three quarter pants and this great combination. So it's always nice when you go on one of these late season hunts to kind of pack for multiple different conditions. You never know what you're going to expect up there. That's why I also brought these just in case I needed to use them, but opted for the more cold weather gear because it was, like I said, below zero. All right. Let's talk about some gloves. So I'm a big believer in carrying multiple sets of gloves on a late season hunt. Um, hiking around, a lot of times I'll just wear these Sika Gunner um, Windstopper gloves. These are great gloves for glassing, being able to you know, feel the knob on your spotting scope, feel the knob on your binoculars, um, give you enough dexterity to actually you know, do a lot of functions while you're out there. So I use these a lot, but they don't have a lot of insulation in them, so I'm sitting down glassing. I use the uh, Sika Stormfront gloves here. What I really like about these is you have a big cuff in the back. You can cinch it down, kind of allow your um, allow all the warmth to stay in your, in your fingers. And they do have a removable liner inside. So if you are hiking around, you get a little hot, maybe you get a little sweaty on here, you can take these out and kind of dry them too. And then when it got really cold, this is when I bust out the uh, Sika Blizzard um, GTX Mittens. Again, these are basically the same principle as before. Got a little pull collar on the back, lock the heat in. And then if it's not super cold, but you just want to you know, use this and use the gunner gloves, you can do this combo and just wear um, just a little mitten portion of it. So if, you cannot, if your hands aren't warm on a late season hunt, you're again, not going to glass effectively. So that's why I do carry multiple sets of these. I might not carry you know, both the gloves and the mittens on the same day, just depends on you know, what the temperatures are before I leave to go hunting. All right, these things right here are gonna be a game changer. If you never use down booties when you're hunting, you gotta try them out. So these are gonna be great around camp. Let's say you, know, you are truck camping, but it's just you wanna go outside, do a little bit of grilling or whatever, and it's cold out, you don't wanna put your boots on, you can throw these on, actually have a nice little bottom on them so you can walk around. Um, a lot of times I use these too on backpack hunts when it's cold out, I just wanna slip on something warm, or also when you're sitting there glassing, um, like you say, like you're using a, a boot that might not be insulated, you can pop these on while you're glassing. It's gonna have a ton of warmth because these are all goose down. And these are made by uh, Western Mountaineering. All right, then the last two pieces on the clothes is just gonna be the Go, Go Hunt Blaze Trucker Hat. Again, just gotta have orange. So uh, even though you know this will probably suffice for the 400 inches of visible orange, I'll add this on top just to uh, make myself more visible. And then the uh, Go Hunt Orange beanie here too. And that rounds out clothes. Let's jump into footwear now. So footwear on this hunt, since it was super cold, I ended up flying with two pairs of boots up to Montana. Um, beginning of the hunt, when it was really nasty snowstorm and negative degrees, I had the Schnee's Hunter 2 pack boots. These are the 16 inch version. Absolutely love these boots. Um, you know, I've hiked around these in Colorado on a backpack late season hunt. Took these to Montana multiple times, hunting mule deer, and now in this hunt, hunting elk. They're awesome boots just for staying warm. And also, I love how I don't have to have a gator when I use these. That's why I really like a tall pack boot. And you get a lot of questions too about, can you actually hike in pack boots? And yeah, they have a lot of flex in them because basically just a rubber you know, boot bottom, leather uppers, but they're actually super comfortable to hike in too. We, we, like I said, we hiked around Colorado and the mountains in November before, totally fine. Um, Work really, really well. Love pack boots, absolutely love pack boots. And also, like I said, I packed two pairs of boots up there. So once it started getting a little bit warm, I switched over to my Schnee's um, Bear Tooth. These are the 200 gram insulated versions. And then inside here, I had my uh, Sheep Feet insoles. And while we're on the same subject right now, as you can see here, my boots are already cleaned off. These were super muddy when I got back from Montana. So instantly what I like to do when I get back from a hunt is I took a power washer to my boots and power washed all the mud off these. Um, reason I bring that up, uh, my brother, when he packed for Montana, I showed up, his boots still had all the gumbo mud on his boots caked on there from last year because he only um, uses his boots for Western hunts. And it's like, you keep all that mud on there every single year, you're gonna end up you know, starting to crack a lot of your leather in your boot. He's gotta keep your boot conditioned very, very well. Obviously I need to add some cushioning to this, but right when I got back from the hunt, took a power wash to my boots right away, got all the mud off both of these. 
And now it's got to add a little bit of conditioner back to them. This adds the life of your boot. So that'll help you out next time. And then when I, when I wore the uh, Schnee Beartooth, I wore the Gators. These are Sitka Stormfront Gators. As you can see here, they handle mud, nasty conditions very well. Keep your boots kind of protected, your uh, upper pants kind of protected from the snow, rain, whatever you're experiencing out there. So I always love gators, no matter what season it is, as you guys all probably know by now. All right, let's talk about optics for this hunt. Um, as you can see here, I don't have a weapon anywhere because um, I don't have a tag. I was just joining my brother for the hunt. But I still packed all the heavy optics to help him be successful on his hunt. So here we have the marsupial um, bino pack. This is a large version. This is their new fully enclosed model. And the reason I went with this one over the uh, Sicko bino harness is because I have the Vortex um, 12 by 50 uh, Razor UHDs. And these are really tall bino, so I need a, a bigger bino harness. And up on top, I have my bino bandits. As you can see here, my binoculars are super dirty. Sorry, Cody. Um, I will clean these before my next hunt. Then just on the side, have a little wind indicator here, just in case. And usually in the front, I don't think I have it right now, but usually in the front, I keep a few extra pairs of contacts just sitting in there in case the contact pops out. Actually, I actually had that happen quite a few times, sitting in the glassing, turn over the side, wind hits it, pops out of contact. So if you wear contacts, always keep some extra ones on you at all times. And then for rangefinder, um, I plugged in all my brother's ballistics for his 300 wind mag into my Sig Kilo 2400 ABS. That just helped him out on the hunt, so he didn't have to worry about ranging the bull. I just ranged the bull, told him to dope, dialed it in, and uh, shot the bull. So I packed this for him. And we also, even though um, my dad has a Sig that's calculated for my brother's gun as well, once I put it in here, we still confirmed that everything was matching up with his gun while we were out there before the hunt. So always confirm everything before you uh, go hunting. Along with optics, um, I also packed Kestrel 5700 Elite. This also gave me all the, the wind data and also extra ballistic stuff if we needed it, but most of the time I just use the, uh, the SIG here, but I love having this as well, especially for wind. And then on late season hunts, I always carry my spotting scope in the marsupial spotter um, pack here. This is the angled version, obviously, and inside here I have my Zeiss. 23 by 70 by 95 Harpia. It's a beef, beast of a spotter, but I absolutely love it. Packing on everything, backpack hunts, late season hunts, all sorts of fun stuff on here. And on the back, I always have my uh, mobile phone scope adapter for capturing video. And then late season hunts too. It's a lot of times, you know, I might do a lot of truck glassing or glassing from a ranger. Um, I'll attach this to the window, put my spotting scope on it, or also put my binos on there because it has a little um, Vortex Uni adapter on the bottom. Just something really stable too to you know, put on a window and do some glassing off that. So obviously I'll keep this in the vehicle at all times. And just my iPhone, this is the uh, XX Max with the uh, phone scope case on the back. Tripod, it's my standard 1204 XL Siri with the Siri VA5 head. Unfortunately, I don't make this one anymore, but there's a lot of other really good uh, serial tripods that we do sell in the Go Hunt Gear Shop. All right, I know I mentioned this earlier too, but I always carry a glassing pad of some sort. This is just one of these Thermarest, I think it's called like the Z-Lite. Uh, it's a sleeping pad, cut up shorter glassing. As you can see, I've had this for a ton of years and has a, I guess, blood from a mule deer coupled with some elk, I don't know, but always great to have a glassing pad. Just sitting down, insulation from the snow, elements, that sort of thing. Again, glassing in comfort. In late season, it is essential. So, pack a glassing pad of some sort. Super lightweight, doesn't take up any room. All right, jump over to the backpack. So in a late season hunt like this, I don't really take a backpack with the top lid, so I go with the Stone Glacier Evo 3300 backpack, as you can see here. Obviously, just got back from my Montana hunt with my brother. So I gotta put the backpack back together, but this is an awesome backpack for a late season hunt when you're not carrying, you know, camp, all sorts of extra gear, that sort of thing. So I love this backpack for late season hunt. Just has everything um, I need without having too much of a backpack. And then again, in the back, it's got the uh, Crux Evo frame. Really awesome, lightweight frame. Super comfortable still with packing in a lot of weight. 
Um, and then on here I have the um, cotton carrier um, for my camera to attach to my shoulder. And then again, just like all other seasons too, I always carry a rain fly, just in case it's you know, a bunch of snow. I pull this out, put it over my backpack, keep my backpack and camera gear, all that sort of stuff from getting wet. So I always carry a stone glacier rain fly. I'll just jump into to some miscellaneous uh, little gear items here. So basically, kill kit, still carry a kill kit and a uh, little camp pull out here from Stone Glacier. Um, a little medical kit, band-aids, gauze, what have you. Um, headlamp, Petzl Reactic headlamp, and I also have a Petzl Actic headlamp. Big promoter of carrying two headlamps on any sort of hunt. You never know when your hunting buddy his headlamp dies, or your main one dies from just packing out a bunch of meat all night, you have to have a backup with you too. And then in here, I got a bunch of extra little accessories. Got a little cord here for charging um, my inReach. Um, I'll talk about that real quick too. I always carry the inReach Mini on every single hunt, late season especially, you never know you need some you know, peace of mind, safety, uh, messaging family back home that you're safe. So with this little cord, I got Dark Energy Poseidon, charge up the inReach, charge up my cell phone, we're all glassing. And then I got a bunch of knives in here. So in this hunt, I actually carried uh, three different knives. Um, I was just given a prototype version of the Argali Knives um, Coal. This is a super lightweight knife, pretty little slick design. Love how it's orange, super visible. Really, really nice, fits in the hand. Um, Great, great new knife. Uh, I think it was actually just released while I was in Montana. And then I also have the Goat Knives um, Capra Hunter TI. It's a sweet little knife multi-tool. Again, it's a replaceable blade, replaceable blade knife. And it also has these little bits in the back that you can uh, put in this little holder here for you know tightening things in your tripod. You know, if you're archer hunting, tighten bow sights, tighten things in your rifle potentially. Pretty cool little slick knife. So it's nice you can have a, you know, a knife that also serves multiple purposes. And that's what's cool about these little quarter inch bits on the side. Had a bunch of extra blades. Um, Here's a ton of them on the elk, but I always carry roughly like six extra blades for that knife. All right, another knife I brought on this hunt was the Goat Knife Tur Carbon Pro. It's another fixed blade design. Super, super sharp. Loved having this knife. I use this knife on a backpack Idaho hunt recently. Um, great, great knife. And the only thing I forgot on both my Idaho hunt and my Montana hunt was my sharpener for a fixed blade knife. So if you have a fixed blade knife like these two, be sure to carry a sharpener as well because cutting up an elk, you're gonna need to sharpen your knife. So that's all that. Jump into some little camera accessories here. I just carry a little microfiber cloth cleaning off lenses, you know, use it for my Spotter, use it for my binos, that sort of thing. Carry a bunch of these little tiny uh, Zeiss camera lens wipes. They're very, very useful. Again, it's the same thing I mentioned before, cleaning up your optics. Um, they come in these little tiny designs, don't weigh anything, so I pack a ton of these with. Um, just keep my optics clean, keep my camera clean, that sort of thing. Lens pen, um, little blower here, pushing out the dust so you don't end up scratching any part of your lenses before you use any of the cleaner products. And then also carry in here a little uh, self timer remote. So you're hunting solo or even when you want to take a group photo, it's always nice to put your camera on a tripod and then just click that and it will uh, take pictures for you. All right, and the last item, even though this was a truck hunt, I still need a sleeping bag. So in this hunt, I packed the Stone Glacier Chilkoot 15 degree bag. Uh, absolutely love this sleeping bag. Um, I actually convinced my brother his friend and my dad to buy the uh, Chilkoot Zero Degree bag last year, and so they had that bag. Super roomy bag, tons of insulation, very, very comfortable. Um, comfortable on a backpack hunt, comfortable in a truck hunt situation. Just a ton of great warmth in the evening on these late season hunts. And then I packed this bag in a little uh, Sea to Summit size small uh, compression sack. So there you have it. That is all the gear I carry on a late season 
uh, hunt, whether it be mule deer, elk, that sort of thing. And this is again for a truck style hunt, so it's not a lot of backpacking gear, but just a lot of the essentials you need to stay warm, um, stay effective when you're out there glassing and uh, hunting in these cold temperatures.